Hi all, this is Sean. So today I thought I'd give you a little bit of a shaky and unprofessional tour of my collection. So I've got um, a full watch box again. Uh, so it seems like a, <laughs> an appropriate time. Um, eight watch box and this doesn't include Swatch because I've got a separate um, box for them and I'll go through them soon but there's not that many to be honest. Um, again, as always, tell me what you think I'm missing from the collection, what you think I should buy if anything, and what you like, what you dislike, what I should add. Um, so yeah, I've got eight watches. I feel like I'm, what I'm trying to do really is have very different watches. So, you know, I'm not, because you're always, if, if they're all the same, you're always gonna just choose one. Whereas if you've got very, very different pieces, then you can you can mix and match. Um, I really like all the watches that I've got. I wear them all, um, some more so than others. Um, so yeah, I'll take through them in, in, in no real order. Um, so, so this one, first of all, um, I say in no real order, but this was the first in the collection. So I only really started to get into watches in about 2015 in, in kind of a big way. And um, some guy that I worked with had, had cool watches and I was kind of influenced by that a little bit. And then this was the first one, I kind of bought it um before i knew a whole lot about watches and i made a really good choice i think um i chose it i stepped for aesthetics but it's an automatic watch with a decent movement in it it was about 400 pounds at the time you can always get these on sale and um, it's nothing mega mega special but i think this watch probably suits me more than any other watch i mean it's it's a it's a really good kind of go-to watch it's 40 millimeters so it's it's quite a good size um, I like the bracelet. I think it's something a little bit different. Um, you know, it's it's kind of a it is one of those kind of do everything watches. Aside from the fact that it's not water resistant um, and the looms crap, it's it's neither a sports watch nor a dress watch. Really, it's it's kind of both. It's trying to be both, which is a bit of a weakness in a way because I've often thought that this is really too close to the Explorer. And there isn't a necessity for having both in the collection. Um, but I would really recommend these watches um, if if you're into, you know, looking for a first good watch or a, or a decent watch. And um, the only thing that I would say stands against it is it's a bit, it's a bit boring maybe. I mean, it's a black dialed kind of everyday watch. <laughs> so... You know, there are, there are quite a lot of watches like this, but to be fair, I don't think you'll get as much for your money as you would with something, as you would with something like Tissot, which is a, a great brand. Um, so next, um, sorry about the shaky camera, it's because I'm handheld here. Um, this Citizen Promaster Tough. I bought this during the pandemic um and titanium i think it's 40 millimeters as well it came on like a denim style strap and this is a watch that is really really full of features i mean it's a, it's a indestructible it's water resistant it's titanium um it's it's eco drive um it's really comfortable to wear at first when i saw this watch i thought it was hideous i thought it was um not a nice watch but then i got to love it and I really like the blue version rather than the black, and I prefer it without the bracelet. Um, but yeah, and another watch I'd really, really recommend. Um, it's the only thing that stands against this watch for me is that you couldn't really wear it in more formal circumstances, because um, it's not a smart watch by any, by any stretch of the imagination. Looms great on it as well. I'd really recommend this watch. I mean, it was about three hundred pounds for a quart. It's relatively expensive, but it's really, really worth it. It's it's a really great watch from a great brand. Um, then do these two together, right? So I'm obsessed with peanuts. Um, uh, Charlie Brown is a loser like me. Um, so I bought this. Um, it's called a Mark One. Timex and it's really cool. Um, it's like a military inspired watch. This is the cheapest feeling watch ever. It feels like it's made out of paper. It's so light. The NATO strap even is really, really thin and, but it's cool. It, I, I, I think it looks cool. Um, if I uh, get rid of some, it might be this one that goes because I've already got 
two other peanut swatches uh, swatches um, and one maybe can have too many watches with Charlie Brown's face on maybe one can't but you know um, this is I think it's 36 millimeters it really works on my on my wrist it's it's really fun um, I really like it I think it's cool and then the, the Casio world timer I wanted this in gold really but it was it was more difficult to get hold of and this was quite affordable what was it 45 pound or 50 pounds something like that and you know if you think about a mechanical watch with these sorts of features world time and and um uh, perpetual calendar and it costs hundreds of thousands of pounds but this is 45 pounds um it's cool looking it's a bit blocky the the case um but i wanted like a metal casio rather than an you know an f91w that's like black and and, and and rubber i think one of the things that for me counts against casio is they tend to be a bit utilitarian look looking um this one maybe not so much it's a bit more funky um but yeah, Casio. Um, then uh, the tank, Cartier Tank Must. Um, this is probably my favorite watch. It's cool and sophisticated at the same time. Um, it's an amazing design. It's comfortable. Um, it makes me feel like I'm fashionable when I'm wearing it. But then again, it's it's not incredibly expensive. So it's... it's um, not unaffordable for a man such as myself. Um, I'd really love to be able to afford a Tank Louis Cartier or you know something in precious metal, but I can't. Um, and to be honest, I don't get the solar. Like, why would you want a solar watch that they can't uh, supply and that will you ever be able to get the battery replaced because they can't even make the watches? But any, anyway, this is just the bog standard quartz. It's on the, the lug strap. It's cool. It's mega cool. Um, then this is one of the newest watches, um, in the collection, Breda, 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 I guess. Um, it's ridiculously impossible to, sp <laughs> to tell time reading this watch. Um, I just saw it on Instagram and I thought it's cool. Um, the company have basically no history. It's not, I mean, they do call themselves a luxury watch brand, which is silly. Um, but I just like the design. Apparently it's gold plated. Um, it was what 160 pounds or something um, I don't wear it very often I've got to be honest it's not really my style it's a bit I tend to like classic watches or swatches which are a bit zany where this is a bit modern I guess the design um, it's supposed to be minimalist um, uh, so minimalist that you can't even tell the time um, but yeah yeah, quarter to five, the time is <laughs> when, we're, when we're recording this video. Um, it is it is a cool watch. I, I, I do like it. Um, and I don't wear it very often, but it's something a little bit different. I just wanted something different because I don't want to just buy eight of the same watches. That's That would be pointless. Um, and it's not really my thing because I tend to go for more reputable brands with with a history and things like that but i just liked it aesthetically um and people have watched this video more than most of the others that i've made recently so um maybe people like it too i mean what i would say is very little about this um watch on youtube um last two um my most expensive and is it my least expensive yes um watch i did not know that there was a clear f91w um and i saw it and i thought it's cool i like clear things <laughs> i tend to go through like phases of liking particular things so i bought this swatch clear and then it just makes it so much cooler i mean the f91w is so utilitarian it's almost like i don't know i mean it's supposed to be a mass-produced industrial watch and, and that's what it feels like and that's what it seems like and that's I don't like that really I want something a little bit more a little bit more authentic or something that doesn't even pretend to be authentic like swatches are so fun and they don't pretend to be serious and this is a watch like that um it's the, the clearness of it is ridiculously impractical. You, you know, you can see your sweat building up underneath it. It's disgusting. <laughs> but um, as well, it's really annoying because that 
is like a scratch on the strap. Um, it's like two weeks old, this watch, and it looks... It's got a scratch on it already, and I was devastated because I, I like this watch so much that I considered just immediately buying a new one because there was a scratch on it. Um, it's about 20 quid, but it's so cool. I just I just really, really like it. And I think uh, watches like these kind of turn me on to the fact that you can have as much enjoyment from um, more affordable watches. Because to be honest, when people said that on YouTube in the past, they've been like, I don't actually believe that you really think that <laughs> um but i get it I, I do get it i think generally i gravitate towards more expensive stuff um because they have the history and and, and you know you can keep it for their holy life and, and and things like that um but you know it tends to be in spite of its, its expense you know if you want to buy a rolex you've got to pay money for it it's as simple as that um then the explorer 214270 39 millimeters from 2016. Um, I bought this just as this version was outgoing. So the new version was out, the 39 with the full loom. Um, obviously they've gone back to the 36 and they've released a 40 as well this year. I regularly think about trading this for a 36 millimeter because it would fit my wrist better. Um, but then I put it on and I think, no, I'm just gonna keep it and then a few weeks later, I'm thinking the same. So, you know, this could be something that goes or it could be something that stays for the rest of my life. Um, I really like the idea of my name being on the card and, you know, all of that sort of stuff. Um, what I don't want to do is just keep this watch on the off chance that it might go up in value. It probably won't, but, that you know, these explorers are still the ugly duckling of the range, I think. They're still dealers still seem to find it more difficult to, to shift these but apparently they made much f much fewer of these than they did the the full loom version so in in the future it might be rare and we all know that for rolexes some of the least loved ones became the most sought after um yeah so so, so i've got eight watches um it's not incredibly um exciting collection necessarily but i think i've done well to kind of have a bit of difference in there you know not just go for the same thing and I'm, I'm trying much more as well now to not be kind of too led by what i think i should buy you know that the idea that you've got to have a speedmaster in your collection you've got to have this in your collection and that and, and that's what makes me think about the explorer because sometimes i think that i'm keeping it for the wrong reasons um you know i, I think a 34 or 36 millimeter date just explorer or op would look better on my wrist um but they don't have the cachet the ops particularly and, and they just don't have the cachet of the explorer so I, I do kind of wonder whether i'm just keeping it for that reason um yeah tell me what you think i should get rid of bring in and what you would add to the collection what you like what you dislike thanks very much for watching and if you like the video please subscribe Bye bye